learning objectives after studying this module students will be able to understand about what is collection of data understand meaning and purpose of data collection know about variable and data learn about types of data learn different ways to collect data learn about census of india and nss meaning and purpose of data collection we know that the purpose of collection of data is to find out the evidence for reaching a sound and clear evidence of the solution of the problem in economics we generally heard statements like after many fluctuations the output of food grains rose to 102 million tons in 1979 from 90 million tons in 1971 after that production of food grains rose continuously to 230 million tons in 2016 and finally touched 350 in 2017 now what we came to know from the given statements that the food grains production is changed over a period of time it is different from year to year and crop to crop what is variable variable are the values that keep on changing these are represented by letters x y or z the value of each variable is an observation in the above example the years can be taken as variable x and production of food grain can be taken as variable y what is data data are the values that these variable hold it is a tool which helps in understanding the problems by providing information types of data the data can be divided into two categories primary data secondary data what is primary data the data which is collected by researcher through conducting a survey are called as primary data suppose you want to know about the popularity of a particular business tycoon amongst the students then you need to do a survey on large group of students then the data which you get is primary data what is secondary data the data which have been processed and scrutinized by some other agency then it is called as secondary data such data we can get from the published resources like government reports documents and newspapers etc that are written by economists for example after collecting the primary data on business tycoons you publish a report if somebody uses that report then it becomes secondary data for them how do we collect the data how to collect data the data is being collected through a survey by asking questions about a particular person or of a particular thing from a large group of people the purpose of survey is to describe some qualities about the person or the product for which survey is being conducted It is a method of gathering information about individuals or products. Preparation of instrument. The most commonly used tool in survey is questionnaire which can be administered by the researcher or by the respondents. We should keep in mind the following points while framing questions. The questionnaire should not be too long. it should be easy to understand and should not include difficult words it should be comfortable to read the questions should be asked from general to specific the questions should be precise and clear the question should not use double negatives the question should not give a clue 
to the respondent about answer. It should not indicate alternative to the answers. Close-ended questions can be a multiple choice questions or two-way questions. Open-ended questions help to give more individualized responses. Modes of collecting data 1. There are three ways to collect data. Personal interviews, mailing questionnaires or surveys, telephone interviews. Let us discuss them one by one. Personal interviews. This method is used when the investigator conducts face-to-face -face interviews with the respondents. Merits of personal interviews There are certain merits of personal interviews. Personal contact can be created between the respondent and the interviewer. The interviewer can study and answer the queries of the respondents. Misunderstandings and misinterpretations can be avoided. An interviewer can watch the response of the respondents. Demerits of personal interviews It is expensive as requires trained interviewers. It takes time to complete the survey. Due to presence of researcher, the respondent feel hesitant to express their thinking. Mailing questionnaire or surveys. In this method, the data is collected through mails. The questionnaire is sent to each individual through mail and requested to send it back after completing it. Advantages of mailing surveys. It is less expensive. It gives access to remote areas also. It does not allow an interviewer to influence the respondent. These days, WhatsApp is popular for online surveys. Disadvantages of mailing surveys Less opportunity to provide assistance to clarify doubts. Modes of collecting data 2. Telephone interviews in a telephonic interview, an investigator asks the questions to the responder over the phone. Advantages of Telephonic Interviews These interviews are cheaper than other modes of collection of data. It takes less time. These interviews allow the researcher to assist the respondents by clarifying their doubts. It is useful. Where a respondent is reluctant to answer questions in personal interviews. Disadvantages of telephonic interviews At times, it is difficult to access people as everybody do not have telephones. Limited use Reactions cannot be watched. Possibility of influencing respondents. Pilot surveys it is also called as pre-testing of the questionnaire. It is a kind of tryout with small group of people to test the questionnaire. Advantages of pilot surveys It provides a preliminary idea about the survey. It helps in pre-testing of the questionnaire. It also helps to access the cost, timing, clarity, Performance of enumerators involved in actual survey. Census and sample surveys. Census is the survey that includes every aspect of the population. It is also known as method of complete enumeration. A census is carried out for 10 years. To study the total population of India. The agencies collect information from rural as well as urban households in India. A house-to-house -house inquiry is carried out. Data on birth and death rates is being collected. Literacy, employment, life expectancy etc. are collected and published by Registrar General of India. 
In India, the last census was held in 2011. Population and Sample What is population? Population in the statistics means totality of items under study. It is the individuals or items who have the certain set of characteristics required for survey. The first step in selecting a sample is to identify the population on which survey is to be done. When population is identified, the researcher selects a method to study the population. In case the researcher finds it difficult to do the survey of the whole population, then a representative sample is selected. What is a sample? A sample refers to a group or a particular section of the population from which information is to be collected. A good sample is usually smaller than the population and provides reasonably accurate information about the population at a low cost and shorter time. For example, we want to study the average age of people in a particular region, then we would be required to find out the age of every individual in the region, add them up and divide by number of individuals to get the average age of people in the region. This method involves huge expenditure. In place of that, we select a representative sample of a few individuals from the region and find out their age. The average age of these selected group of individuals is used as an estimate of average age of the individuals of the entire region. Advantages of Sample Surveys Provides reasonably reliable information. Low cost Less time, easy supervision of work, detailed information can be collected. Types of Sampling There are two main types of sampling. Random Sampling, Non-Random Sampling Random Sampling This method is also known as Lottery Method. Under this method, the individual units are selected at random from the population. For example, the government wants to determine the impact of the rise in petrol price on the household budget of a particular locality. For this, a representative, random, sample of 30 households has to be taken and studied. The names of all 300 households of that area are written on paper and mixed. Then, 30 names to be interviewed are selected one by one. In the random sampling, every individual has an equal chance of being selected. Non-random sampling Non-random sampling is a method in which all the units of the population do not have an equal chance of being selected. These samples are selected on the basis of judgment, quota, purpose, convenience of the investigator. For example, you may to select 10 persons out of 100. You may select the persons on your judgment, which are known to you or which are located in your locality. Sampling errors Sampling error refers to the difference between the sample estimate and actual value of the characteristic of the population. We can reduce the sampling errors by taking a larger group. Non-sampling errors and Census of India and NSSO Non-sampling errors Non-sampling errors are more difficult to handle as these errors are difficult to be minimized. The examples of non-sampling errors are Sampling bias Sampling bias happens when the sampling plan is prepared in such a way 
that members of the target population could not possibly be included in the sample. Non-response errors Non-response errors happens when an interviewer is unable to contact a person listed in the sample or a person from the sample refuses to respond. Errors in data acquisition These errors happen because of recording of incorrect responses. Census of India and NSSO Some of the agencies at the national level that collect, process and tabulate data are Census of India, National Sample Survey, NSS, Central Statistics Office, CSO, Registrar General of India, RGI, Directorate General of Commercial Intelligence and Statistics, DGCIS, Labor Bureau, etc. What is NSS? The NSS was established by the Government of India to conduct nationwide surveys on socio-economic issues. NSS gives collected data through reports and its quarterly journal, Sarvekshana. NSS provides periodic estimates of literacy, school enrollment, utilization of educational services, employment, unemployment, manufacturing and service sector enterprises, maternity, child care, etc. The NSS also collects details of industrial activities and retail prices for various goods. They are used by Government of India for planning purposes. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Variable are the values that keep on changing. These are represented by letters X, Y or Z. Data are the values that these variable hold. It is a tool which helps in understanding the problems by providing information. The data which is collected by researcher through conducting a survey are called as primary data. The data which have been processed and scrutinized by some other agency is called secondary data. The most commonly used tool in survey is questionnaire, which can be administered by the researcher or by the respondents. There are three ways to collect data. Personal interviews, mailing questionnaire surveys, telephone interviews. Personal interview method is used when the investigator conducts face-to-face -face interviews with the respondents. In a telephonic interview, an investigator asks the questions to the responder over the phone. Pilot survey is a kind of tryout with small group of people to test the questionnaire. Census is the survey that includes every aspect of the population. It is also known as method of complete enumeration. Population in the statistics means totality of items under survey. It is the individuals or items who have the certain set of characteristics required for survey. A sample refers to a group or a particular section of the population from which information is to be collected. Random sampling method is also known as lottery method. Under this method, the individual units are selected at random from the population. Non-random sampling is a method in which all the units of the population do not have an equal chance of being selected. These samples are selected on the basis of judgment, quota, purpose, convenience of the investigator.